wonder what truly drives success in your Christian business? It is you. Better said, it is your growth in vital character qualities that drive your success. In Galatians 5, Paul gives us this list of the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But what do these qualities really look like inside of your business each day? And how can they be demonstrated in those day-to-day activities? By growing your self in these key areas. And we're going to look at just three of them today, which we think encompasses all of the fruits of the spirit. That is positivity, dependability, and mastery. Now, I'm just telling you, these are not buzzwords. They are actual foundational things that help you have that satisfying business and actually a fulfilling life. So join us as we explore these powerful traits and how they intertwine with your unique personality, propelling you toward growth and, of course, greatness. I'm Deneen TV. And I'm Mary Allure. Welcome to another episode of the Truth and Business Show, where the truth is God's word and business is how we serve. <laughs> Well, you know, the one thing that I love is what we get to do with our clients who are all women, of course, is that it's we get to show them that about growth in all areas of their lives. Um, I know for me personally, I've grown tremendously over the last few years. Uh, so I, I could give my own testimony, but <laughs> I'm going to say about Carrie, one of our clients, She said in one of her testimonies is that being in this program has challenged me to grow deeper in my walk with God. I've made some significant progress over this last few months, and I believe this is going to lead to success versus just hard work. Oh, I so agree with that, right? (laughs) Yes, right. I know. I mean, we need to be growing in so many different areas, whether that's business, professionally, personally, like just getting better at what we do. And of course, spiritually, and that's what we're always looking for. But before we get into that topic today, um, I just want to remind everyone to subscribe to the channel if you're here watching us on YouTube and ring the bell so you know when we upload a new podcast or I go live or something like that. And of course, if you're listening on the podcast, I think what you have to do there is you have to follow us, give us a five-star rating and share the episode on whatever platform you're on. Share the episode. Doesn't matter. That always helps a lot, right? Yes, it helps us a lot. (laughs) I love that. Okay. Well, we're going to get into these three things. So let's start with positivity. You know, it's really, sometimes people think it's, um, it's, it's that character quality of just a cheerful demeanor, but it goes a lot deeper than that. Don't you think? Right. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's, it's silly if we're just think that, you know, I'm going to say positive things and I'm going to be positive around people. It's so much more. It's a deep down attitude that, really boosts your own morale and you you become your own cheerleader and right, enhances right. productivity and really helps you be more creative. I think that's the the biggest thing at least for me is that to, as a creative person that that when when a people are like Debbie Downers it like steals all of your energy. So yes. you you don't get the ideas. You don't understand more like you're, you're looking at the at the, the big cloud instead of the possibilities. And I, I know there's a big thing in our culture about, you know, toxic positivity. It's not about being fake. No. It's not about all no. that stuff. But but we do have those people in our lives that always see the negative and and how can we continue to be creative, continue to be productive. If, if we're always in that environment, right? We need to, right. we can be positive for other people, but we have to be careful who we hang around to. <laughs> yeah. That's a big thing. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Especially in this, uh, since you're an entrepreneur, you're doing it, you're a solopreneur mm-hmm. and so you're doing it alone. You have to surround yourself by people who have a similar mindset Mm -hmm. as you. And that really helps spur each one another on to do things and to keep on going. Yeah. Uh, I know myself, I can be, I can be a very negative person or see the negative negativity first, definitely. So it takes a lot uh, for me to change that. But what helps me is being around others who are 
not that way. Yeah. Like Denise, a- she's always saying, giving well, me the, the, but <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's this it's, way. It's the positive mindset because I believe that both ways is contagious, but positivity can be really contagious in that we, we talked about this, I don't know, some other time, instead of saying, seeing the problem by saying yes, but let's say yes. And, and right? think, yes. About the and. <laughs> think about what can I contribute to that? We were having that discussion. I remember we were having that discussion with a book that we were yep. reading for our book club. And, and it's really, it is a mind shift. It, you know, it I want to say it's a reframe because when you approach a problem or a challenge or, or just everyday business stuff with a, I can do this, a can do attitude. It really does affect others and inspires them to look for solutions and do things a little bit differently than maybe they're used to. And, and I, you know, I have gotten to the point where, um, we've been in masterminds and people are just shooting down every single idea that you have. That crushes your creativity. That crushes, you know, your spirit because you're like everything that I'm trying to give them. They're one. They're not receiving it, right? And I do. And I always like to tell this story. Do you remember that time it, we were in that mastermind and uh, Lori kept just like, yeah. shoot, what, what did I finally say to her? I. <laughs> You said that everything that you've said, you said you can't do it. You can't, you can't, or it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Yeah. And you're like, you're not listening at all. No. And I told her, I said, didn't I say like, I'm going to just stop. I'm just not giving you right. any more ideas because you right. were not receiving any She's of them. Not, no. It wasn't even like, oh, I've never thought about it that way. Or I know. Oh, will you elaborate on that? How could I do that? And that's the other part is just really, you know, seeing things in a different perspective and allowing that into your life. And so, so the positivity is not toxic. It's not fake. It's, you know, something, you know, it's something that can be elevated that you can work on. So the question I'm going to ask every time when we talk about these different things is how, how does our personality or how do our personality traits shape this approach, this having this positive approach to our businesses. And I think that it is, that it is traits like optimism and resilience, because if you're resilient, you're always going to look for that other way to do something. Right. 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 Yes. And I got to say, like I said before, optimism, I'm not so great on, but resilience. So I don't know. I thank God for that because without that, I don't know if I'd keep on, you know, going on, Mm -hmm. but so I think resilience for me, especially plays, plays a huge role in how we continue with being positive and going forward. Right. And I'm, and, and and I do want to relate this to the, the fruits of the spirit and um, there are nine. And I think that there are three here that really are key to helping us because if we're growing in our relationship with God, if we're growing in loving God and loving others, that these, these qualities are going to start to emerge more and more. And I think the three that really hit home here about positivity are love, in kindness and gentleness. I think love because we need love for what we do. We need love for the people that God's called us to to serve, really. Right, right, right. That gives us resilience, I think. It does. It does. And it makes me think of our Bible study right now, loving God mm-hmm. and loving others. Mm-hmm. And I'm learning so much about it. You know, like it really does help you find the positivity in a situation. Mm -hmm. It really, if you think about the two commandments, Mm -hmm. love God and love others as yourselves, it really helps you to pull that out and become more resilient and bounce back from a setback that can be, can happen in difficult times, but can help you go forward. Oh, definitely. And, and, and that just leads into kindness and being kinder to people and, and, and learning how to, to have that positive attitude or, or approach something with more, with more of a sense of let's figure this out. Let's do right. something about this. And yeah. so I think that that helps us with growing our kindness is being positive because we're going to look for the good things in the person or in the situation or whatever. Right. 
which leads yeah. to really, it's all about being hum well, having humility, being humble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, that, and that's what gentleness means. I think a lot of people, I think in other translations, it's meekness and people think oh, that, and people think right. that, that that's like, let people walk all over you. But really it's about, it's about considering others, which Paul tells us another part of the Bible, considering others more, um, uh, better than yourselves, consider yeah. them first. And that does bring about humility, right? I mean, we can't absolutely we can't consider other people if we're <laughs> no. not being humble. We're only thinking <laughs> about ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, like I said, if you if you're practicing positivity, you're being optimistic, you're naturally going to look your personality is naturally going to look for that silver lining. And you're going to see um, those challenges in your business as opportunities, more than obstacles. But I think that it is, it is a growth. It's more of a growth uh, process for certain personalities than for other personalities. So everyone right. doesn't have to be at the same level. I just want to no. make, make that clear right. to everybody, no. right? That it don't, you don't have to be at the same level of optimism, but how can you put more optimism, more positivity into the way you're thinking? Because God doesn't want you to be the Debbie Downer in that you give up because I think that happens. You're like, oh, yeah. This is just never going to work. And <laughs> that's not what God wants for us is to give up. That's what the enemy wants for us. The yeah, enemy wants right. us to give up and say, you know, God's put this passion in my heart to do this business, to, to, to help these clients, to, to help other people. But, you know, oh, I'm coming up against so many different obstacles and, and I'm not seeing a way out. It's, it was Get yourself around some people that'll help you grow in this Absolutely. area. That's what you need. And that's the same with what you said with resilience, right? Right, right. And I think you have to get yourself around other people who are continuing to show up. Uh, that's the thing, because it can be so easy to just not show up, just to mm -hmm. be like, okay, I'm not going to go to that. It's not working. But mm -hmm. when you see other people who are consistently showing up and trying and trying different things and just keeping it going, that really helps you a lot to think like, right. well, look at what they're doing. I can do this too. I can right. try. Right. I'm not exactly. going to just give up. Like you said, yeah. just be like, ah, <laughs> forget it. Yeah. I mean, I think that that, that mindset of being optimistic, being resilient, being positive, it does rub off and we have to, yeah, it does. We ha but if we're like isolated and by ourselves, forget it, then the enemy is <laughs> going to get into our heads and they're, and he's just very gonna, easily. Yeah. And he's just going to tell us that we can't do this anymore. And that's why I believe that having a, a community of like-minded, you know, entrepreneurs, Christian entrepreneurs, women, I mean, even women different than men approach things yeah. differently. And we need to be encouraged. We need to be challenged. We need to be like in a place where it's not just somebody saying, yes, you can do it, but I know here's how you can do it. Let's try right. this. Let's try that. Let's be positive, but be positive in a way that makes sense, not in just uh, and I'm going to say this until it actually happens, because that's we know that that doesn't that work. is not going to work. No, <laughs> we do not believe in any of that at no. all. No. no, 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 no. So that's great for positivity and it having is. a positive mindset. Yes. And I, hopefully we've given you enough that you can see how it's not about toxic positivity, but it is about being with others that help lift right. us up and help us grow in this area. So let's talk about the next one. The next word we want to look at is dependability. And I think this is probably my biggest thing that I want to be seen as when I talk about my reputation is that I want to be known as being reliable, right. being trustworthy, that if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Yeah, I got to say that is me too. That is me too. That's, I don't know how we both have this, this stuff. Maybe that's why we're here. I don't yeah, know. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. I mean, here we are. It, it's it's early in the morning. We're recording this. We, we yeah. said like what, two weeks ago, we didn't have to give each other a reminder no. that we were going to do it. We both no. just showed up showed at up. the time that we said we were going to show up to record this podcast. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I had to put on makeup for this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me too. I was like, and I tried to curl my hair this morning. I, it was a disaster. So, you know, if you're on the video, you could see that it was a disaster. Anyway. Yeah. But that's what I think when I think about being dependable, having dependability is showing up on time, yes. meeting deadlines and really consistently delivering high quality work, you know, working with excellence, which is one of the things that we talk about with our yep. clients. How do we show up working with excellence? This dependability gives you, like I said, that reputation. You want your business to have a good reputation. You want to have a good reputation. Right. Um, yes. I mean, that's, it's, it's crucial. It's crucial for your clients, uh, your colleagues, you know, to to count on you to follow through on your promises. Like if you mm -hmm. say you're going to be there, you'll be there. I mean, of course, things happen. We all know things happen. And sometimes we or sometimes we overdo things. But as long as you, you know, make an effort, right. um, if you have to reschedule, do so. <laughs> but but right. it's so important for others to see us following mm -hmm. through on our promises. Right. I mean, it, you're not going to get new clients if they don't do the what the classic no like trust factor. Right. This dependability showing up, being consistent, showing up and showing up the same way, being authentic. All of those things work into that no like trust factor. That is where dependability is really key to not just keeping the clients that you have but getting those new clients. People seeing you the same all the time. People need to know that they can rely on us because the only way we're going to strengthen relationships, strengthen our reputation is by being dependable. Again, we go back to that book that we were doing in our book club, and we were talking about the three levels of, of getting to know someone that we can have that level one of like that transactional type of relationship where I give you this, you give me this. And right. And then we can grow it to the next level. And that means opening up. That means being dependable, like showing up, saying you're going to do something and, and, and them seeing that. And then getting to that intimate level where, where you can, you know, not just that pour out your heart. I don't want to say it that way, no, but, right. but they can rely on you. They know that even if it's a client, it can be an intimate client coach relationship because you know more about them. You're willing to tell your stories and, and they can see that you're human. I think that's the other part. We don't want to right. seem so dependable right? that, that we're not real. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. We have to show up and I think it goes back to what we were saying about the positivity to be open and honest and, and transparent and, mm -hmm. you know, and show yourself as being there and you're being, you're there for yourself, but you're there for them really too. You're there for the other per person. Right. Um, like just yeah. say, for example, today we're doing this podcast and yeah, like Denise said, it's early in the morning. <laughs> we had issues getting here, but I, I knew Denise was depending on me to be here. And so it's, it's, you make something, you make it positive. You make it positive. Mm -hmm. You say, I'm going to go and do this and it's going to be good. Right. And I mean, I think in our culture today, a lot of times people like they just wig out, they say they're going to do something and yeah. then something better comes along and right. they go, Oh, I'm going to go do that. Or they just get lazy. And they say, right. I don't want to show up. And it, that hurts the relationship that, that, that gives the, it gives the person in their mind to say, can I really count on this person? And it's right. just like, just like, you know, you have, they have to rebuild that trust. And that is so hard to do after you've it broken is. the trust. It's easier to just continue to expand on, on, oh, she showed up this time. And she showed up this time. Oh, she, she signed up for this and then she came and, and not just, but if there is a problem to let people know, because what we do is we just like make up stories in our heads. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so do, if you don't want people to make up stories, be honest, be, and tell them what's going on. Don't, right. don't think that you have to be so secret and so private. Um, so, okay. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the personality traits that really help us develop this person, uh, this, this, this character quality of dependability. So I think it's closely related to being conscientious 
mm-hmm. and showing up with integrity. I think that's what it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think so. I think so. And being conscientious, you know, you're, that means that you have to be organized and you have to discipline yourself. <laughs> so it's, it kind of, it goes all together, but um, you're more also, I believe your personality, you're just more detail oriented too. Yeah. And we, we, we work with our clients and we do a, <clears throat> the disc ask. It's not really the disc because I'm not disc certified, but we we do the disc with our clients to have them know if they're a D, I, S, or C. And of course, C is conscientiousness. And, and not everybody is going to be a C that we work no. with. Mm-hmm. But when we look at the disc and we look at those four letters, what the goal is, is to get more balanced in those areas, not to just stay in our little corner of the four squares, right? right. Or the circle or whatever, segments of the, the, the quadrants of the circle. And it's really to say, how can I be a little bit more balanced in this? Um, I always was saying I was a DC and I guess what happened, Mary, I found my disc Thing that I did years ago, and I'm actually a DI. And huh. so I was like, but I have grown so much in C. And I know you're, right. an, F, you're an SC. And so right. between the two of us, it's that's the thing we God just never leaves us. He gives us our personalities. He gives us our character and all of that. But he wants us to grow. And yes. I think this is a good area when we look at business, that how can I grow to be more of an I or more of a a C, more of an S. Because if you're a strong D, you can be very offensive to people. So how can you be a little bit more compromising and be more right. of an S? And I think for anyone in business, conscientiousness is a must. Being detail-oriented, really showing up with integrity, that dependability, and that yeah. discipline. And that goes into that goes into the fruits of the spirit. The first one I think of is self-control. Yes, I know. Yes. How perfect is that? I know. <laughs> Self control. And the other one is faithfulness. That oh, yeah. That's, that. that's showing up, being faithful, yes. doing what you say you're going to do. I mean, right. I think that a lot of us, in the culture that we are today, we're we're so distractible, yes, and yes. we we just allow things to come in, and we we scroll, we 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 distract ourselves so much, and that is pulling away from that self control. Oh that my gosh, God wants to grow <laughs> in us the faithfulness that He wants to grow in us. I think that- isn't it ever? There's so many things that can pull us away from what we should be doing mm-hmm. right now. There's so many things that are like vying for our attention with, you know, Mm -hmm. glitz and glamour, and they want to show you something that really interests you. And they're actually targeting you. That's the scary part, isn't it? Yeah, they're targeting for your attention, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, So it's so important to this fruit, these fruits of the spirit, dependability, where we're going through self-control, peace, and faithfulness is so important because the the peace is in there. Yeah. Because if you have self control and if you're faithful, you're going to have peace. Oh yeah. I mean, for me, if I have my routine, if I have my schedule, if I have my planner, whatever you want to call it, do plan doing that and having all of your work, knowing what you need to do, knowing your responsibilities. And really are committed to work, I li- as I like to say, meticulously, like work at creating a plan, a routine that works for you, fulfilling those responsibilities and not getting distracted, not getting away from ha- doing the work that God is asking you to do. Yeah. Because we all want to have successful businesses, but I don't know if we're all wanting to work as hard as we actually need to as an entrepreneur. I know. I know. I That's think- the thing. <laughs> That's the thing. And of course, going back to what we see and what we're we're targeted with, we see everybody's success mm-hmm. and we don't see the difficult parts and the hard work behind it. Right. Um, I don't think there's yes. an excuse for anybody who wants to be an entrepreneur to say, I'm just not detail oriented, or I'm just not this, or I'm just not that. You have to have the integrity to be honest with yourself and say, okay, God has asked me to do this. And so morally, I need to follow the principles of positivity, as we said, dependability, growing in these fruits of the spirit yes, growing that, actually, that actually infuse 
the way I show up for my business, right? I mean, right. that's what integrity is all about, you know, is being honest, having strong moral values and all of those things. And really, how can we integrate these things into our daily actions? Well, one thing is we can show up that that's showing people that we can be more dependable. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I know that our team members and our clients know they can trust us. Um, mm -hmm because we show up, <laughs> we show up even when it's hard. Yeah. And even when others don't show up, right? We're there. Exactly. I know you have yeah. to, you have to deliver yeah. on what you promise, because then you're going to be building those stronger, more reliable relationships. Exactly. And we know that that people want relationships. Brene Brown has done all the sociology work around that, whether it's for your clients, for your other team members, for those who see you in your networking circles, wherever it is, you've got to show up so that you can build these business relationships, build personal relationships, and then show up with God to build your spiritual relationship. We have to show us. That's huge. That's huge. <laughs> Number one, work on your relationship with God. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I just remember one time Anita saying, that she was getting so much more organized and she was really excited about it. Um, she said here, she goes, I, I have a, I have one of our testimonials uh, as a screenshot. And I put, I've also been progressing through the course, our calling clarity course, mm -hmm. specifically working on the UVP, which we all know is the un unique value proposition. What makes you stand out or different from everyone else? And she says, it's been so helpful getting my thoughts sorted out. I think that's what the enemy also does. Besides distraction, it's overwhelm in your own thought process of uh, what can, I, I can't do this. It's too much. Uh, it's too much. Don't you think? Oh my gosh. Yes. And I get that way often too. Like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. And it's so easy to get there. Um, and that's why it's so important that we keep a calendar, mm. keep whatever written, electronic, doesn't matter. Keep a calendar, yeah. make sure you look at it ahead of time, plan ahead of time. Really, that I think it may be one of the ways to start is to start with a calendar and and use it. Don't just start out great and then peter off. <laughs> Keep right. on using it. Right. You know, and I Sunday know night, check. Go your, ahead. Yeah. Check, I'm sorry. Sunday night, check your week ahead. Monday mm -hmm. morning, check your week every day. Yeah. Work off of a calendar. Oh, definitely. I have, um, I started this year in 2024 using an electronic Google calendar <laughs> finally, but I do have my paper calendar yeah. and so Whatever works. Yes. What, I mean, it is, it is helpful. It reminds me, I, we work, a lot of our clients are creatives in different senses. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it reminds me of, of what Lisa said one time to us, she goes, she thought she could never have a calendar, have a routine. Right. She thought that's going to kill my creativity. But then she found out that it actually gave her more space in her brain because yes. it wasn't overwhelmed with what are all the things I have to do today and then run out of time. It was, how do I put all these things into my calendar? So I give myself time. I know. And so I remember she came one time to one of our, our Q and a coaching calls. And she said, she says, I've gotten off of my routine and I have to get back <laughs> <laughs> because she realized how valuable it was, you know, right, to, right. to really have that. And that when you have that routine, you have your appointments written down, you actually don't forget them. You show up and that goes back to the dependability, it goes back to the self-control. It goes back to having faithfulness in front of others. And it goes back to having peace for yourself. Ah, yes. <laughs> that is like what you should strive for, having peace for yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Well, let's 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 ask the audience a couple of things while we're here. And now we would love for you to comment down in the comments with what are you thinking right now? Let's get some feedback. If you're listening, put it in the comments. If you're watching, put it down below, right? We'd love yep. to know. How are you feeling at this point with these two words, positivity and dependability? And I want you to look at your own personality and how do you feel like it's stacking up with what we're talking about? We don't want you to think that, oh, there's some ideal out there and I'm, and, and that I'm never no. going to achieve to right. get, and get no. overwhelmed. We really want you, we want you to feel like you're open 
to what God wants and how he wants you to grow uh, personally, professionally, in your business and spiritually. So let us know what you're thinking. Um, we promise that we're going to answer your comments and mm -hmm. questions. And we love having that feedback. So we just want to let you know that we're here for you. And, uh, and we would love to have that little chat in the comments with you. So that would be, that would be awesome. Wouldn't that be awesome? We yes. Get, yes. We get a few we, comments once in a while. And it's really, it's really exciting for us. We yes. kind of, kind of like our little love language, like a little confirmation <laughs> comments. That, that somebody that somebody you know, is out there saying, oh, right. I really like this, or I have a question about this. So yeah. let us know, let us know. Okay. So we've talked about dependability, talked about positivity. So now mm -hmm. we're going to talk about mastery. Now, everybody goes mastery. What? I know. I know. It's a, it is the pursuit of excellence. It's that continuous improvement. And I think that it is a must for being an entrepreneur. You have to keep learning, right, Mary? Oh my gosh. You have to keep learning because <laughs> things are out there changing all the time. Um, mm. And especially in my field, technology, but in, it really in all fields, but mm -hmm. You have to because there's always a new new things to learn, new skills to gain, um, and it it helps you stay on top of things and be the best that you can be in whatever field you're in. Right, right, and that was one. That's one of the reasons that we've been doing this book club. I don't know. I used to read a lot of books, um, probably down to just one a month. Now it used to be I was reading three of books at a time at a time when I first started in my entrepreneurial journey, but you really do need to keep honing in on the skills that you, because you just don't know what you just don't know. And I always I say that, right. And, right. and something new comes along or a new aspect, or like you said, technology is changing all the time. Yeah. I just know that a lot of our, our clients and other people that I've talked to when chat GPT first came out and a, using AI, people were really reluctant about it, especially yes. Christians. And I was just like, but, but it's there for our use you can abuse it. Yes, yes. But, but it could be very helpful. Why? I mean, if you have a headache, are you not going to take an aspirin because it was, it was created in 1899? You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, it, right. it, can, I be know, used. it can be intimidating, but it can be. right. let's think through it. <laughs> let's, yes. let's reason together through it. Right. It can be a real productivity tool for you. It can yeah, you know, it really can help you out. And, and even in these last few years since the pandemic, I mean, I think uh, before the pandemic, even in the area of the way we were marketing our businesses has changed. Yes. Again, we've gone much, much more into relationship marketing, even if it's online, not, you know, showing up in a local networking, but people, right. you know, it depends on your business, but especially online, how do we create this community when we are in so many different areas across the globe and still feel like we belong somewhere? So everything is always changing. And so mastery really means, you know, being dedicated being patient and being committed to really lifelong learning and how yes. and staying up on all of those things, striving to always be like ahead of the game. And I don't, I know not everyone is an early adopter when it comes to new technologies, the way that you and I are, but right. don't discount it. Help let, let other people, those like-minded Christian women yes. entrepreneurs help you get comfortable with it, help you utilize it to the best of your ability. I think that's, right. you know, don't, don't stay in that one spot. Right. Not learn exactly. More. No, don't. You have to be open. I think and it goes back to everything. I think we've been talking about, you have to be open and yeah. to new ideas and new ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. And now it's so, I'd say that we have more opportunities now online to learn. Mm -hmm. We have so many opportunities. There's courses, workshops, training. I mean, there's so much you can look up, like, you know, whatever that it is you want to do. Uh, but of course you have to do your due diligence and make sure that they're for you and right, <laughs> make right. sure that, you know, they're again, like we say, like-minded. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's, it's even easier now to learn. Oh, things. definitely. I call, I call YouTube, YouTube university. <laughs> I'm hoping that someone's using our podcast, our, our right. truth and business show 
as a learning opportunity, a a new way to think about something because mastery in business, mastery in any area of your life is really a journey. It's not a destination. You're never, you're never going to arrive just like in your Christian faith. You're never never going to arrive to be exactly like Jesus until you actually get to heaven, but you're going to be more and more like his, it's like him as you grow in your faith. The same is true of your, your industry. You're going to grow more and more in your industry and hopefully become the thought leader in your industry or really just good at what you do. Right. So that people find you dependable. They want to be your clients. They want to hire you, that you are positive, that you're showing up authentically and doing all these things and that you are ahead of them. And you can only stay ahead of people if you continue to have this mindset of what's the next thing I need to master? What's the next thing I need to know about? So that kind of thing. So, okay, Mary. So how do our personality traits really influence this journey towards mastery? Because I think there are people who are like not lifelong learners or don't think that they need to be lifelong learners, right? Right. But right. Some, some of the traits I think are things, I, what do you think? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say one is a growth mindset. You Mm. have to have that mindset that you want to grow and you want to learn and you want to, you know, stay committed to, I don't know how to say it without saying growing again, but growing yourself. And Mm. even if it's challenging, I think that you, it's a growth mindset and we've heard that word a lot, but yeah, but that, that it's it's because it was coined by a psychologist. Her name was Carol Dweck. Really? Yes. (laughs) It's in a book and then everybody grabbed onto that book and, and oh. but she is a psychologist. Her name is Carol Dweck and she actually has a definition I wrote down. It's the belief that abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. Huh. Well, does that sound like an entrepreneur? Dedication yes. and hard work? <laughs> Absolutely. So that's really what a growth mindset means is that we have to be dedicated to what we're doing, dedicated to God dedicated to his calling, dedicated to our businesses, dedicated to our clients, and really be willing to do the hard work. Now, I also believe that this personality of being curious, and we Mm -hmm. talked Mm -hmm. about this Mm -hmm. when we were doing the book, Humble Inquiry, Mm -hmm. is that instead of telling people what to do instead of, instead of, of bringing solutions to the table all the time, ask questions, ask be questions. curious. And, right. and this is something that a lot of us who are entrepreneurs, who are totally like me, like totally success driven type A personalities, we forget to be curious. And this is a trait that I actually work on so that I can continue to engage people more yes. than tell people. Now I am a very directive kind of kind of coach, but at the same time, I want to understand. And that, isn't that what, um, I don't know if it's John Maxwell. He says, you know, first seek to understand and then to be understood. And so I think yeah. that's the curiosity piece, having the growth mindset, willing to work hard. And that's comes along with perseverance being just keep going. We've talked about resilience already, but perseverance, I, I call that tenacity, you know, being willing yep. to, to bite it off. And, and, you know, I feel like a, the dog when they bite something <laughs> and he shakes their head, his head, her head, and they don't want to let it go. But that's, that's the tenacity of I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, get as much out of this as I can. Right. I that That's a personality trait that I think many entrepreneurs have, at least they need to have. <laughs> I don't know. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I agree with you 100%. And it makes me think about um, how we talked about in a couple of our book clubs about how this asking questions, it's like Jesus was and is. Mm-hmm. And um, he usually answered a question with another question. <laughs> uh huh. And, and it, you know, it helps people think and to come up with their own words and put Mm -hmm. it into their own words. And uh, I think just like the other book that we read, Marketing Like Jesus, you know, um, really just cultivating these traits and being like Jesus, what would, like we said before, what would Jesus do? Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Mastery 
resilience, yeah, curiosity. Because it, exactly. Because that way we're always seeking new knowledge. We're always seeking how we can get better. And, and that perseverance in it is that despite all the difficulties, the setbacks, the challenges that we have, that we're willing to stay committed to the path that God has us on. Right. And, yes. and if we relate this to the fruits of the spirit, I think of the three, the last three we haven't talked about yet. And probably somebody is out there going, okay, there's nine of them. What are they going to say? <laughs> we still gonna... have, we have patience, joy and goodness, right? Patience, mm -hmm. joy. patience. We need that. That's perseverance, having patience, um, using and, and, and being curious and using questions to get to know someone better. It, that's definitely patience. <laughs> yes, <laughs> At least for me in, in our fast, quick paced world, you know, we, it is we want patience. everything right now. It is patience. It is patience. And it's really, your learning's not all going to happen like boom, you know, it's you, you need to be patient of, and, and, and really pray saying, God, what do I need to learn next? What resource right. can you bring in front of me that I need to learn? I remember years and years ago, I, I was uh, getting stuff out of the library, my local library. And I, this is when I was in my like three books at a time, like one in the car, one by my bed, one in the bathroom kind of, kind of <laughs> days. Right. And, and I remember that I felt like all these books were like, popping out at me that were all having to do with like new age stuff. And I was like, I was like praying like, Lord, why do I, why are you letting me know all this stuff? Why is this important? And it's because at the time, and it probably, it still happens. You know, I was talking to a lot of women who claim that they were Christians or probably believed that they were Christians, but they were on that more spiritual side. And so they were doing things that were really not biblical. But if I didn't know that they were new age, if I didn't know those kinds of things, and it was a growth process for me, I was still getting sucked into some of that stuff as well. And God really like showed me how it was wrong and how it didn't align with the Bible. So I was able to speak into the women that were coming to me. And so I do believe that God puts those kind of things in front of us. Yeah. And, and so that we can learn, even, even if it's just to warn us and not Absolutely. that kind of stuff. So I think, I think that helps a lot with really, for me, is to have that more biblical mindset. It's like, I, because I can see the problems in what somebody, by listening, by asking those right questions. And of yes. course, if we're more resilient, if we have a growth mindset, if we have all this stuff, we're going to see the goodness in what we're doing. We're going to feel the joy in what we're doing. It's going to, our joy is going to grow. Our satisfaction is going to grow, right? Yes. That's my, my word for the year is simcha, which is the Hebrew word meaning joy. So <laughs> all this year in 2024, I've been looking for how each thing that I'm doing is bringing me joy. And, you know, I think that's one of the reasons I know you might be listening to this way in the future, but right now, Mary and I are going through a transition in our business because we're growing mm -hmm. and we're looking for more positive things and ways that we can show up and be more dependable for our clients. And we really do know that this is for our good. We know that this is goodness and it's going to bring us more joy. So, you know, God, God help, you know, we have challenges, we have setbacks, but we have to also remember that that is for our good. Yeah. That's a really good example. It, it is. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Cause it can be difficult to make a, such a huge change like we're doing and mm -hmm. there's new software to learn, new ways of doing things to learn. Uh, so it's a really great way of thinking of it, Danine, of that it is going to be for our good. Mm -hmm. It really yeah. is. Yeah. And one thing that I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I wasn't going to say anything. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I wanted to say that, like, how, how do we, how are we to be more curious and have this growth mindset? And I was sitting here thinking, I think the number one thing for me, at least, is to be uh, in the word every day. Mm. And, and I don't always make it, I don't always make it every day. Uh, things come up, you know, that kind of thing. But I think being doing my own, uh, Bible study, uh, with whatever, you know, whatever guides that, 
I'm using the precept one right now, or being in a Bible study, that mm -hmm. just really opens up my mind every day to different ideas, different things uh, that that God, I think, is trying to impress on me. Right. And I, I think that, that is so important. I think that we need to meet with the CEO, the chief everything officer, mm -hmm. every single day. If it was a, a physical boss, I always say, a physical boss, and he said, come be, have this meeting with me, you wouldn't be like, oh, I don't have time. Sorry. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So I think it's really important. And I'm glad that you said it because we also, I think a lot of times as Christian entrepreneurs and business owners, we participate in Bible studies, maybe in our, in our churches, but we don't always know how to apply it to right. our everyday business. And I, and I know that lots of people have what we call silo lives. Like mm, this is, mm -hmm. this is, I talk about this when I'm at church and I talk about this when I'm at work or I'm at in mm -hmm. my business and, and, and there's not a seamless interconnectedness to their yeah. life that they're showing up the same way all the time. And I think that's what I love about our community of Christian women, business owners is that we do bring those examples of how can I apply what I'm learning in God's word to the business, to my clients, to my team members, to those that I connect with outside of church that may never be in a church, but I get to be Jesus hands and feet in the marketplace. Yeah. That's exciting for me. Right. So yes, yes, we need, and that, that incremental growth, it's not like you have to have like this, some spiritual high. No, it's that incremental daily thing. Even if it's 10 minutes, yes, you know, do something, do something. I was listening to someone the other day. Um, she's a psychologist. And she said that that first hour of your, when you wake up in the morning is when your brain is the most like malleable and, mm. and, and can, can have mm. the best impressions. And what we've done now is we have picked up our phones as soon as we right. wake up and we start scrolling I know. and we allow that to be the first thing that we see, or maybe somebody goes and, you know, watches the news and all that stuff. Right. What you, what she was saying is you need to, to create yourself a routine of sorts where you are taking time to reflect. Now she's not a Christian. So she's at, taking time to reflect and mm -hmm. meditate mm -hmm. or whatever. But I, I keep thinking about, that's what I do. When I first wake up, I, I do stretching. So I, I'm still in bed when I start my stretching. So I have that stretching time. So my first, you know, half hour is stretching and it's a lot of counting, <laughs> but counting for me is very calming uh -huh, uh -huh. and things like that. So, so think about, and I guess I could tell her, say it to, to everyone, think about what can I do in that first half hour to an hour when I yeah, get up that's a good that time. is good for me to have a relaxing time. And it could be that you do your Bible study. It could be that you just talk to God. Mm -hmm. It could be that you count and stretch and do some exercises, but, but take, bring yourself into your day slowly. I was thinking last year in 2023, while I was doing my exercises, I was listening to a man who had recorded the Bible. So I ended up listening to oh, the whole Bible oh, that's good. in the year. So it was like, 18 to 20 minutes, 22 minutes every day. So that's what I was listening to while I was doing my exercising and my stretching. Um, and I ended up going through the whole Bible. I, oh, he, he probably has good. it on his YouTube channel and it, you don't see him. You just see like this picture. So you don't uh -huh. need to watch anything, but it was Justin Peters, um, Justin that's Peters. Great. And I, oh, I, I thought I felt like that was a really easy way to ease into my day. So I didn't have to create a whole huge routine. Yes. But also my personality is I like variety. So <laughs> therefore I need to <laughs> change things up this year. I am doing a study on different hymns. And so I look up um, hymns. I look up the scripture that inspired the hymns and I write those in my journal. And th it's been a really good time. I mean, we're already, we're recording this in July. So yeah. um, it's already been seven months into the year and I I'm really enjoying it. Remembering a lot of hymns. I grew up in church. So remembering oh, a lot nice. of hymns and, yeah. and, and learning new hymns and going, Oh, what's that one sound like and finding it online. So you can find everything yeah, that's online. Good. 
So. Yeah, you can. You can. <laughs> I think that's a great example because not everybody can do, and we know that, not everybody can have that time in the morning. Some people have to get up and rush and get their kids or rush and get their whatever kids ready for school or wherever you're going, or if you're on vacation even. Mm -hmm. like So just to have like something that you, it's a great idea to listen to something just to live. I think that's an awesome idea. Um, yeah. It's easy. Um, it's it's better than being scrolling on your phone. Right. So and right. I, that's an awesome idea. I think I might do that myself. Um, <laughs> I mean, even if it can be like 15 minutes, like yeah. when you wake up, just don't tell anybody you're awake yet. And if you do have kids and you have to get up at a certain time, just wake up 15 minutes earlier just to give yourself right. that time to kind of prepare for your day. Right. Do yeah. something for yourself that connects you to God that connects right. you to your feelings that connects you to how your body is even feeling what your mood is for the day that kind of thing and right. I think it can I think it can alter it I think it can alter it well yeah especially since you said that that that's when they find that your brain is more you know like a sponge mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's yeah, gonna exactly and it just, you know it sets you up for the day it sets you mm -hmm. up to to have that growth mindset and mm -hmm. to be resilient and to go on when, you know, things aren't going great. It sets you up for a good day. Yeah. You know, we've been talking about all these character qualities and growing these characters. You know, your business truly does thrive on the strength of your character. Your business depends on you. Yeah. And so if you're growing, your business can't help but grow. And that's what really what God is doing for each one of us, you know, to be prosperous in God's economy is to really be growing your character. And he's using your business to do that. So by yeah. nurturing the th three things we've been talking about today, positivity, dependability, and mastery, we actually are creating for ourselves this environment that allows us to flourish. You know, these are not just professional traits. Really, they're a reflection of who each one of us are as individuals, yeah. you know, yeah. and and who God's really transforming us to be, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. These are, I love that you said that, that these are, you know, not just for your business, it's for your whole life. It's mm -hmm. your whole yeah, life definitely. and your interactions with other people and right everywhere. Yeah. And these, th these three things that we talked about today, positivity, dependability, and mastery. I'm going to keep saying that they really are deeply intertwined with your own personality traits. So yeah. you can grow and they really help to shape our actions, the interactions we have with people. And they're really guiding us to build our business, not only one that succeeds, but one that actually makes a more positive impact on everyone that's in our sphere of influence, everyone that we touch. So this is my encouragement to each one of you who's listening today. I want you to continue to grow these character qualities, making your business really a beacon for positivity, dependability, and mastery. So I can sum it up this way. These I, I loved, I loved that I got this summation from ChatGPT. So I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna get K credit for it. But it's believe in positivity trust in dependability and strive for mastery. Isn't that great, Mary? That's really good. <laughs> That's really good. Chachi Petit, when I put in the right prompts, I get some really good right. nuggets. And I think that's a really good, a nugget. good nugget. Believe in positivity, <laughs> trust in dependability and strive for mastery. If you want to know more about how you we can, how this can happen for you, how you can make it better for you. We would love to direct you to the link that's going to be in the description. It's already in the description right now. And let's start your character growth right now so we can help you succeed. Mary, we made it to the end. So thanks for joining Woo! us on the Truth in <laughs> Business show. Make sure to, again, give us a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening, we'd love a review and do share the episode. Um, this is Deneen TV. And I'm Mary Allure. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, be filled to overflowing. Mm -hmm.